about uh, systemic and adaptation to favorable reaction. And when we talk about this this kind of idea, we have to entropy and ultimately free energy. Um, entropy is designated with an S and free energy is designated as a G. Okay, so enthalpy was delta H, right? And now entropy is gonna be S, free energy is G. Okay, so these are the other two kinds of concepts we're gonna to have to understand when we talk about uh, in thermodynamics here, okay? Now you're gonna hear this term thermodynamically favorable, okay? In the old tests, the old AP, what I learned is that that we don't we didn't say thermodynamically favorable, but instead we use spontaneous. Okay, but we don't use spontaneous anymore because spontaneously sounds like it just happens automatically. But that's not really the case. When we say something is spontaneous or thermodynamically favorable, it means the reaction will occur without intervention once the energy of activation threshold has been met. Okay. So remember that you have, when you have a reaction diagram, usually you have this amount of re energy needed for the reaction to go from reactants to products. Okay, so this energy of activation, this energy of activation or activation energy is required for the reaction to occur. But once that energy of activation ha occurs, the reaction will happen spontaneously, meaning that the reaction kind of fuels itself, okay? So as some products, some reactants become products, the energy released or absorbed during that process causes the reaction to keep going. It just keeps going and going and going, like this goes on and on and on, okay? Okay, so uh, again, this is just called thermodynamically favorable. Now, also remember that this has nothing to do with how fast the reaction occurs. For example, like rust is a thermodynamically favorable reaction. Like rusting, iron plus oxygen going to Fe2O3 or going to rust, that is thermodynamically favorable. However, it takes a long time, right? It takes a long time to happen. Okay, it takes a really long time to happen. So it doesn't mean that it happens super, super fast. Okay. So, um, now, again, really what determines thermodynamically favorable, if something is thermodynamically favorable, it will have a negative delta G. Thermo favorable. Okay. If it is not thermodynamically favorable, it will have a positive delta G. Okay. If delta G is zero, we consider that to be at equilibrium. So it doesn't go in either direction. It'll just actually it'll go in both directions. I you should say <laughs> it doesn't go it doesn't go in it doesn't go in one direction more than the other. I should say. All right. Now, so there's two things that really actually three things that determine whether something's thermodynamically favorable. One is enthalpy. We talked about enthalpy. That's the heat exchanged, right? And in general, exothermic reactions are favored, but that's not always the case. And then this term entropy. So entropy, or the disorder, the dispersal, the disorder of matter and energy of a system. Okay, more if there's more dispersal or more disorder, that's more favored. Okay. Again, nature tends towards chaos. Think about your room, right? Your room starts off really clean. And then as the day goes on or as the weeks go on, it gets more and more messy. Unless you're a super neat freak and you just always clean, right? But it wants to get to a state of disorder. Okay. So those, those two things, and as well as temperature. Temperature also has an effect as well. Temperature has an effect as well, but higher low doesn't really matter. Uh, it, I, I guess it, higher low does matter, 
but it matters based on what these two things are. Okay, it can affect those two things. Okay, next. So we talked about enthalpy already, but let's talk about what is entropy. So again, entropy is basically, it describes the number of arrangements that are available to a system in a given state. Okay, it's very, very closely related to probability. Okay. Um, the, the concept here is the more likely uh, or the more uh, the more likely a state is to occur, the higher the entropy. Okay. Basically, the nature spontaneously proceeds towards states that have the highest probabilities of existing. Okay, we're going to look at in, at what this means real quick. Okay, so if we have a system, if we have a system with four particles, right? Four particles in two different bolts. These are all the possible ways. These are all the possible ways that that system can uh, that this system can exist, right? So, as you get more and more particles, the number of possible states will obviously increase. Okay. Now, if you look. Down the middle here is that there's two in each side, so two in each side. Okay, and the probability of that occurring is one, two, three, four, five, six out of 16, because there's a total of 16 here. Okay, six out of 16 uh, says that this is the most likely to happen, so therefore that would be the highest state of entropy. That would be the most, if this state occurred, that would have the highest entropy. Okay, it's the highest, the most likely to occur, right? Whereas these two states down here, either four in one side or four in the other, these are the lowest entropy. Okay, and then these are different from each other because they this is three on one side and this is three on the other. Okay, so we would say that this has the highest entropy, the middle one's here, this is the highest, and then these are the lowest, and these are somewhere in the middle. Okay, so that's basically what entropy is. Okay, so if you had something like this, if you had these four molecules and you found it in this state, it would have the highest entropy. If you found it in this state, it would have middle entropy, and this one would have the lowest entropy. Okay. So uh, just a couple things here about predicting entropy. Uh, if you have the greatest dispersal of matter, that's going to be the highest entropy. Uh, it always increases as you go from solid to liquid to gas. Obviously. Gases that are the most disordered. So the most disordered. So solid has the least entropy, liquid has the most. Okay. Uh, when a pure solid or a liquid dissolves, it obviously increases. Okay. Because it's going to separate more. There is one exception carbonates. Carbonates interact with the water and become more ordered. They basically attach themselves to water. Right. You get some hydrogen carbonate in there. Okay. When a gas molecule is, escapes from a solvent, so like if the gas is dissolved in water and then it escapes, the entropy increases. Okay. Entropy generally increases with increasing molecular complexi complexity. So the larger the molecule, the greater the entropy. Larger molecules have greater, greater entropy. Um, if you're increasing the number of moles, so if your reactant goes from three moles to six moles, the entropy goes up. You have more stuff. So basically more stuff, more entropy, right? So the greater number of arrangements, 
the, the, the greater number of possibilities, the greater the entropy. So that's in general there. Okay. So predict the sign of entropy change for each of the following. Justify your answers. Solid sugar is added to water. So this is dissolving. It's going to be positive. We're increasing entropy. Iodine vapor condenses. If it condenses, lowering entropy, so it's negative. Pretty simple there. Okay, so if we want to, um, so when we want to find delta S of a reaction, this one way to do it is we use this, the again, the big mama equation that we use for enthalpy. We do the delta S of formation of the products minus the delta S of formation of the reactants. Okay. Now, just be careful if you look up the, the, um, the values. So this is going to be using a table of values. Be careful because sometimes we're going to use entropy and entropy together, and we're going to do it very shortly in an equation. And uh, entropy is usually given in joules per mole of reaction, okay? Whereas delta H is usually given in kilojoules. So just be aware that usually delta H is in kilojoules, delta S is in joules. All right, so just be really, really careful. Okay, but this is just... Again, you're using a table of values, delta S of products minus delta S of reactants. I think I have a reaction here. Yeah. So uh, this one, so again, reactants, uh, products minus reactants, products minus reactants. So 2SO3, so there's 2SO3s here, so 2 times 256, minus some of the reactants, so 2SO2 gas, so 2 times 248.1, 2 times 248.1, plus O2 gas, which is 205, and there's only one of them, so 205.3. And then you should get that. Uh, for, careful here because, you know, in the enthalpy, when you had the things in their elemental state that was zero, but that's not true for entropy. That is not true for entropy, so just be careful with that. Okay? Oops. Okay. Uh, so actually, everything you did with enthalpy, I'll go back really quick. Every did, everything you did with enthalpy, you know, the, the um, Hess's law and, uh, and this one and all that stuff, you can do with, with entropy as well. So you can use Hess's law with entropy as well. So you know you can find it for one reaction. You find delta S for one reaction. If you combine two reactions, you just combine their delta S's. Okay, so just a little side note there. Okay, um, same thing with delta G. Delta G, you can, you can use um, delta H's of formation, all right? And you can also use Hess's law for delta G as well. So combining reactions or looking at individual molecules. Uh, but so delta G, delta G is what we call this this term Gibbs free energy. Okay, uh, and really like don't worry about what what it is really. It, it doesn't really make much sense. Um, but it's basically whether a reaction is thermodynamically favorable or not okay remember delta g if it's negative it's thermodynamically favorable if it's positive it's not thermodynamically favorable if delta g is zero then it's at equilibrium meaning the reaction is occurring in both directions at the same rate it's at equilibrium. It's the reaction's going in both directions. Either that or it's totally stopped. At equilibrium or stopped. Or not. Eh, no, it's at equilibrium. I'm not even gonna say that. It's just at equilibrium. Delta G is zero at equilibrium. 
Okay. So there are five ways you calculate delta G, very similar to what we did before. Again, um, the big mama equation, like I said. So delta G of products minus delta G of reactants. Okay, you're going to use the table of values. Uh, they're different, again, delta G and delta H and delta S all have different delta um, values of formation. Um, whereas entropy had did not have zero for their elemental forms, delta G does. So delta G is zero for elements in their standard form, and it uses kilojoules per mole. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier. So kilojoules, kilojoules, remember delta S is in joules usually. Okay. Now, again, delta S's or S's are almost never zero. They're never zero except the per perfect diamond at absolute zero, and that's not gonna happen. You're never gonna see that. Okay, the next one is this equation. This one's the most important equation when we talk about delta G. Uh, this is usually what we find, we use to find whether something is at equilibrium or not. Okay. Um, so this is a super, super, super important equation. Uh, I believe it is on your reference sheet, but you really, really need to know this one. Okay. Um, and this one, most of the time, you're going to... Um, be using this one to determine whether something is uh, thermodynamically favorable or not. Okay. Uh, we also look at if delta H is so. So we want if we want it to be at equilibrium. If sorry, if we want it to be thermodynamically favorable, delta G has got to be negative, correct? If, it's, if it has to be negative, then it's going to be beneficial for delta H to be negative and delta S to be positive. Okay. If this is negative and this is positive, then in, under all circumstances, it will be thermodynamically favorable. Okay. When you start changing whether these are negative or positive, so if you change this and make it positive, now it depends on temperature. Is that temperature large enough to overcome the positive delta H, or is it too small? Okay. Same thing if, let's say, delta H is negative and delta S is negative. Now it depends on, is that temperature small enough to not affect delta H enough? Okay, so oftentimes you'll see a chart. Let me see, they give you the chart here. No, I think it's later on. Get it down here. Da, da, da. This. Oftentimes you see like a chart like this down at the bottom here, where delta H is negative, S is positive, they're always thermodynamically favorable. Positive, positive, it's at high temperatures, it's favorable. Negative, negative, low temperatures are favorable, favorable. Positive, negative, never. Um, I don't like to memorize this. Some people say memorize. You can if you want to. I just like to think about the equation delta G equals delta H. Sorry, delta S minus T delta H. Sorry, I don't know why I'm like backwards here. Delta H minus T delta S. I'm thinking backwards here. Um, so I just like to think about the equation here, and then I, I can extrapolate those things from this equation. Delta G equals negative, sorry, delta H equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay. Okay. Going back, 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 back here. Okay. Um, Hess's law of summation. So again, when I talked about, so you can calculate free energy using um, Hess's law. So remember how we did that before with enthalpy, and you can use it with entropy as well, where you're um, combining reactions to find an overall reaction. Okay, so this works with delta S, delta H, and delta G 
can all use Hess's law. It's all the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, another equation that is not similar to any other equations here is this one we call the rat link equation. So delta G can equal negative RT natural log of K. Now we haven't talked about equilibrium yet, and, and this is actually this is why this this unit, this part of the unit is usually covered later on in the year, but I figure, you know what? Just understand that K is an equilibrium constant. You don't have to be concerned about what that means right now. Just know that that's what it is, equilibrium constant. Okay? Um, and delta G equals negative RT ln of K. And But in this case, we use K is, uh, sorry, R is 8.3145, not the 0 0.0821 that we usually use. Okay? Okay. And again, K is equilibrium under standard conditions. Remember, standard conditions is 25 degrees Celsius as opposed to STP, which is zero degrees Celsius. So we're not STP. Remember, STP is for gases. Standard is for thermo. Okay. <clears throat> um, we will talk more about this stuff the relationship of KP and KC uh, later on when we talk about equilibrium. So don't worry about this too much. I'll try to avoid any problems that, that cause you to use this equation. We're just going to worry about this right now. You'll be given K. You won't have to, have to, so you won't have to solve for it until we get to equilibrium. Okay. So try it. I mean, I, I'll give you this here for now, but um, yeah. Anyway. But I could be too concerned with that. Okay. Uh, same thing why this is also covered later on is because it also involves um, <clears throat> the uh, E naught. E naught is what we call the standard cell potential, and this is electrochemistry. And usually we don't do electrochemistry till later on in the year, so this is another reason that they don't usually. Um, include this unit until the end. But again, I'm not going to actually ask you to do anything with uh, calculating this. I'm just going to, it's going to be given to you or, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be given to you. So you just have to figure that out. Um, pretty much all these are given to you. So we're not going to use this equation too, too much. It's just kind of like a little introduction to it. Um, but you can calculate delta G based on the electrochemical potential or the standard cell potential. Faraday's constant in the number of moles of electrons transferred. Okay, but it, but don't worry too much about this equation. We'll worry about this when we get to electrochem. Okay, uh, there are some examples here. I'll include this. I'll include this thing in the. Um, I'll include this in the uh, assignment here, so you can work on it if you like. Uh, I'm not going to actually do it. Oh, this should be, so this is, this little thing here should be like delta G not a formation. Okay, this. So these are the G of formation for each one of these things. And you're going to use uh, Hess's law or the big mama equation. This is the big mama. Which is products delta G of formation products, sum of them, minus the sum of the delta G of formation of the reactants. So that's using that equation. Um, this one, we have delta S, delta G. Uh, this one is tricky because <clears throat> what you actually have to do here, what you have to do here is you have to calculate delta H using big mama, delta S using big mama. So delta, the sum of the delta, whatever, of so H or S of the products minus the sum of the delta H or S of the reactants. Then you get delta H, delta S. And then you, to find delta G, you use that uh, delta H minus T delta S. So you plug in these these numbers you got based on the Big Mama equation, this reaction. 
this equation, and then the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, and you'll find out whether delta G is positive or negative. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but that's how you do it. Ready to do that. Um, this one is Hess's law. So combine reactions. So you got to flip the second one. It's really simple, this one, actually. It's just flip the second one and combine. OK. Um, this one, you're using um, the, so let's see here, using that calculate the equilibrium constant. Uh, so this one, you actually have to find delta G first. Well, I shouldn't say that. You, you find uh, delta H, delta S, then you use delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So you use the big mama, big mama to find these. You know, products minus reactants. You get the those two there and there. Uh, then you use the temperature. To find delta G, and then you use uh, the Ratlink equation, negative RT ln of K, delta G, to find K. Okay, don't forget R is 8.314, T's temperature, and um, to do the opposite of ln, opposite is E to the power. Okay. So if you have trouble on this one, let me know. I can I can always go over that one. Uh, this one, okay, the thermodynamic boiling point. Uh, so this is where uh, delta G equals zero. Okay, this is at equilibrium. So at equilibrium, at so this one you're going to use delta G. Equals delta H minus T delta S. And you want to find the temperature when G equals zero. So if this is zero, delta H is 44. T we don't know. Delta S is 118.8. You want to find T. What is T? Okay. So solve for T. Okay, and T will be in Kelvin. Well, actually, I, I forget. I think it actually will be in. Yeah, yeah, it'll be in. It should be in Kelvin. Should be in Kelvin. Yeah, it'll be in Kelvin for sure. Uh, do be careful, though. I, I actually I screwed this up. It should be over a thousand. Be careful with all of them because all of the the delta s's are in joules and all of these are in kilojoules. So even when you do like this one here, it's joules and kilojoules. So you got to convert these to kilojoules or these up to you which one you want to do okay anytime you have these the delta h minus t delta s remember that this is kilojoules and that's joules okay uh this one the equilibrium constant again using the the rat link equation uh, delta g negative or ln of k so you're going to solve for k here you, they, they gave you the delta g they gave you the R from 8.354. We talked about that. Okay. Uh, if delta G, so let's talk about thermodynamic favorability when we talk about cell potential. If delta G is negative, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. So the reaction is thermodynamically favorable. And under those conditions, E is, o, e is not of the cell will be positive. Um, this means that the the bat it's when we talk about this is like a battery, the battery will run. Will run something. <laughs> um, delta G is zero. That means just the battery is dead. It's it's gonna run. It's not gonna run anymore. That's not to say that you can't reverse that. You you can by putting energy into it. Um, if delta G is positive, it's not thermodynamically favorable. The E of the cell will be negative. The battery will 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 go backwards, right? Um, so the battery will run backwards. Slash current will run backwards. And it's all reference. It's all a reference, right? Like 
I mean, if you just flipped the 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 battery, because usually in a battery there's two cells, right? It's gonna go. It could go one direction or the other. Okay, and we'll talk more about this when we get to the electrochem. So don't worry about that too much. But if it goes one direction, then that would be positive. If it flips and goes the other direction, that would be negative. All reference. All point of reference. <clears throat> so again, here, uh, misconceptions. Delta G is greater than zero, positive, thus not thermodynamically favorable. The process cannot occur. That's not really true. External sources of energy can change this. So electric current can be applied to a battery to charge a battery, so it will run it in the opposite direction. Right? It's not dead. It just reached equilibrium. Um, light and photon absorption and photosynthesis of a chloroplast causing photoionization to photosynthesis, another, another example. And um, if you couple thermodynamically unfavorable reactions with ones that are favorable, such as like ATP to ADP, that is also a um, another instance there. Um, if delta G is large and negative, the pro process must proceed as a measurable rate. Well, not really. Um, <clears throat> if the reactive molecules are held very strongly together with strong IMFs or covalent bonds, the reaction may be very slow. Um, this may happen very, very slowly. Um, remember that collisions always have to occur in a specific orientation. So if the collision orientation isn't occurring, then the, the reaction could move really slowly. Um, and then finally, uh, yeah, I guess this is, oh, energy. Yeah, the amount of energy. So maybe it's occurring with the correct orientation, but you don't have enough energy in that reaction. So as I said, all the it could be thermodynamically favorable, but it may not occur at a measurable rate. It may just go really, really slowly. Okay, and um, that has to do with the realm of kinetics and not thermodynamics. Okay, all right. Hopefully, that kind of gives you a little bit of a glimpse into some of these things. Uh, there's a worksheet that I assigned with this to go along with it. Uh, try your best on it, and I can go over any answers that you might want me to go over. Just let me know. All right.